Hey guys, it's Charlie and it's Subs Week on the Pagan Perspective and this week's topic is totem animals. So I have a lot of things to discuss with this topic and I have a lot of reading to do so please forgive me but don't forgive me because it's more information for you guys. Uh, all the links to all of the things mentioned in this video will be in the description box. This is actually a previously discussed topic on the Pagan Perspective and if you're interested in viewing all of the previously covered topics you can check out Pagan Perspective collab.blogspot.com to see all of the topics we have discussed in past seasons and episodes and you know all of the history of pagan perspective. <laughs> Gregory asks what is our experience with totem animals? How do they influence or help with parts of our lives? And which animal best represents you if you don't work with totem animals? So I deeply feel connected to the squirrel. I feel like the squirrel has lots of lessons to teach me and I definitely felt a connection with them when I was in Mexico. I don't really work with totem animals in too much um, meditation, but sometimes I do, mostly in meditation and dream work. But my most deepest connection with any totem animal, especially the squirrel, is in real life. Not that those things aren't real life, but in my everyday life, um, I feel like squirrels come to me and not in that kind of way, but <laughs> they, <laughs> they bring me some type of message or kind of like a reminder for my life. So before I get into discussing the squirrel, I actually would like to discuss why are totem animals important in our lives and this is going to be linked in the description box. I thought it was very important to as my reason why totem animals are important. Animals afford us visions of how our lives could be if we lived more simply and lived with purity of thought and emotion. Therefore incorporating animal totems into our lives affirms our spiritual goals. By focusing on the attributes of our totems, we internalize these traits and thus begin to externalize the very character we absorb from our totems. This really represented why totem animals are so important to me in my personal life because we don't live in a very natural world. We live in buildings, we drive cars, we don't really live in our most natural state but animals do and they are a deep reminder of you know how we would live or how we would act in our you know our natural habitat and so whenever i am around animals i feel a deep connection and a deep a deep reminder of just being free and living as we would in nature and they are definitely a deep reminder of that for me so i just thought i would talk about why and then next I wanted to clarify something because totem could mean different things to different people and cultures. I thought I would bring this up uh, when you search on Wikipedia, the whole you know wonderful trusted Wikipedia. <laughs> um, I thought this was a good thing to point out. It says a totem is a spirit being, sacred object or symbol that serves as an emblem of a group of people such as a family, clan, lineage, or tribe. And then they go on to explain some more about different totemistic beliefs that are found in different regions, for example, Africa, Arabia, Asia, Australia, Europe, and the Arctic. But then it goes on to say that contemporary neo-shamanic New Age and mythopoetic men's movement, not otherwise involved in the practice of a tribal religion, may misappropriate and misrepresent a totem. So they would use that terminology for personal identification with a tutelary spirit or guide. So that's the way we use it. You know, it's talking about New Age and uh, neo-shamanic. So pretty much the neo-pagan <laughs> group, which would be most of us or many of us, unless you are working with some type of lineage or, you know, traditional type of practice, then it would be neo-paganism and 
we refer to our personal identification whereas totems in other cultures and people it's more of a group representation rather than a personal representation so i thought i'd point that out the next thing is <laughs> i thought that since i live in south korea i would share some stories about animals <laughs> and i thought this was interesting because animals represent different things to different people and different cultures and in korea there are many stories and many creation myths and things like that or stories about animals a lot of animals play a big role in their folklore and traditions. So usually when we talk about any stories from a long time ago, we usually typically talk about people. But if you think about, for example, the snake, we have a lot of images that come to our head when we think of a snake. This is similar in South Korea, but with different animals and different themes. So this is going to be a bit long, but I'm going to try and animate it for you with visuals <laughs> so that it can be a bit entertaining. I know that many of you might have some ideas of maybe Chinese folklore, maybe from dragons or, you know, some other folklore from uh, maybe tribal cultures like uh, Native American tribes. But this will be cool because it's Korea and most of you don't have any information on this. So let's get started. <laughs> Animals in Korean folklore. Animals are more than just creatures of the forest, fields, and mountains. They have a long and important symbolic connection to the land and the people of that land, and they are a prominent place in Korean folklore. Even Korea's most prominent creation myth gives animals a central role. According to legend, the Lord of Heaven, Hwanin, sent his son, Hwanung, to earth to teach humans laws, agriculture, and other skills. Hwanung was approached by a bear and a tiger who both wished to become human. He told them that if they wanted to turn into humans, they would have to sequester themselves in a cave for 100 days, staying out of the sunlight and eating only garlic and mugwort. The tiger gave up and left, but the bear did as told and was turned into a human woman, who then married Hwanung and gave birth to his son, Dangun. Dangun later became king. The legend probably stems from the totem animals of different Korean tribes. This is actually a very, very popular, like probably one of the main Korean folklore or stories. And some people really do believe that this is true, that there was really, you know, an animal that uh, <laughs> turned into a human. So this actually connects to the topic because this is how some people in other cultures might imagine if you talk about, for example, a bear or something, they will connect those stories and have different imageries and connections to the bear. Moving on to continue about the tiger. Tigers show up in a lot of Korean folklore, sometimes as dangerous and terrifying figures, but also as foolish or funny animals. In the story of how the sun and moon came to be, a tiger eats the mother of two children, then tries to trick the children into letting the tiger inside their house. The two children climb up a tree and then are rescued by a magical rope that descends from the heavens, where they turn into the sun and the moon. The tiger tries to follow them, but the rope breaks and the tiger falls to its death. So that is a story about how the sun and moon came to be in Korea. <laughs> Another story is about a very hungry tiger who eavesdrops on a woman and her baby. The young mother kept telling her baby to be quiet, saying that many dangerous animals were outside the house. But the baby kept crying. First, the mother says, there's a bear. Next, she says, there's a tiger. Finally, she says, fine, here's a persimmon. The tiger, not knowing what a persimmon was, thought it was something even more dangerous than itself and ran away frightened. Ah, I have a few more stories, so bear with me. <laughs> the next one is about foxes, and foxes are very big in South Korea. There are a lot of stories, there's even a Korean drama about a fox. <laughs> foxes are also popular animals in Korean stories, especially magical foxes like the Gumiho. The Gumiho is a legendary fox with many tails, usually nine. The Gumiho can change its shape and often turns into a beautiful woman to try and seduce men so it can eat 
its favorite snack, which is human livers. Koreans have special sayings about magpies. Supposedly, if a magpie sits on the roof of your house in the morning and sings, you'll probably be visited by a good friend. But if the magpie comes in the afternoon, it won't be a friend who visits, but they will eat a lot of your food. <laughs> the most dangerous is when the magpie comes to visit at night, which means a thief will come. The last one that I have to share is about rabbits, and they are often seen as clever trickster animals. One of Korea's Hansori songs, which is a Korean traditional folk song is about a dragon king who lives under the sea. The dragon king fell ill and was told that he needed to eat a rabbit liver if he wanted to live. So he sent out one of his turtle minions to go bring one back. The turtle found a rabbit and tricked it into coming with him by promising he would live in a beautiful palace under the sea. When the rabbit figures out what the turtle really intends, he lies and says he left his liver back in the forest. The turtle turns around and takes the rabbit back to get the liver and the rabbit runs away to safety. Those are pretty much a few stories of Korean folklore and this kind of gives you an idea that some cultures think one thing about a specific animal in other cultures they represent a whole nother thing maybe you can look into Korean folklore and see what connections some animals might have to you according to those traditions the next thing the last thing that I want to discuss is pretty much my personal squirrel power animal and I found this really useful website for you guys that you'll probably want to check out. It is shamanicjourney.com. They have a lot of power animals and totems and spirit guides. And you can click on the link and then it will lead you to a whole explanation on the different animal. And when I read this, I really felt it was exactly what I feel about squirrels and how I felt my connection to them, especially while I was in Mexico. But pretty much every time I am walking in nature and then a squirrel is in my presence I definitely feel that they come to bring me messages so I'm gonna share a little bit with you. Squirrels gifts include ability to solve puzzles, resourcefulness, quick change of direction, storing for the future or planning ahead, balance in giving and receiving, power of rest during times of non-movement, warning discovery change avoiding danger by climbing to higher place and action the idea that there are obstacles which can't be overcome is not part of squirrel's outlook on life nor is giving up squirrel is an almighty power animal to have any time when you feel you have reached a dead end in your life or in a situation and ready to give up we are shown that perseverance and readiness to try different methods are the key to success so pretty much to never give up and not lose hope because there's always a way for something to come about or to be fulfilled. This animal also shows us how important it is to be prepared. Few if any animals are busier than a squirrel during the autumn. They gather enough nuts and seeds to get through the winter and buries them. For us, this is not only important in the physical level, it also means being as flexible as squirrel when it comes to allowing and starting change. When squirrels prepare for winter, they gather only what they require. This teaches us the importance of letting go and getting rid of unnecessary physical objects. This speaks a lot to me actually. <laughs> In New Mexico, I was very much into minimalism and I was around squirrels so much and this definitely speaks to me a lot <laughs> this teaches us the importance of letting go and getting rid of unnecessary physical objects and also negative beliefs emotions and memories which limit our faith in love and abundance we need to lighten our load physically mentally and emotionally i'm not going to continue reading but if you guys are interested in this topic of squirrels or any other animal if you want to look up your totem animal if you feel a connection to them and you want to read more or maybe get some more insight on what it could mean if you have a totem animal in your life you can check that out in the link and yeah so i will conclude this long video thank you for bearing with me i hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to check the links in the description thank you for watching and i will see you guys later bye